Photoshop best export settings for beginners. Hey guys, welcome back. Today we'll be taking a quick look at how you can get started with downloading your photos or videos and what kind of settings should you be using. So let's get into it. Now, wherever you are using Photoshop, I'm pretty sure it's probably one of the most uh, used platforms out there for photo editing. And I would say that whenever you are using a platform or a tool as powerful as Photoshop, you want to make sure that you're actually getting what you're actually, you know, valuing. So you want to make sure you're exporting your, you know, changing your images and downloading them properly because it's really a waste when you download images or download something and then you realize that these were not probably the best settings to use. So let's say we have this image over here and I will be discussing a few different ways that you can download and export your content. So depending on the type of content you have and where you want to share it is very important. If you want to share it on social media, if this is for a banner, if this is for a wallpaper, if this is for a iPhone wallpaper or a email, if this is going to be attached as a file. Whatever you want to do, it's going to have different types of ideal settings. So speaking about the best settings that you can set as a beginner, I can recommend that you stick with something that has great, you know, great quality and low compression side, a lower compression size because you don't want to compress your photo too much. And uh, the reason for this is because you want to opt for the best quality photo. However, if you're going to export on social media platforms, you want a lower file size. So you can do either two things, really great quality with compression or a lower quality image for sharing, but that is not going to have any compression. So to do this, if you guys see on the top right, you actually have some export settings. Now, uh, this is for my Mac and you guys can see in the export settings, you have custom settings, you can click on that. And this will give you all of your export settings. Then you also have JPEG, which is, you know, some of the most basic settings where you have 90% quality, JPEG large, original, and then previous settings. Now, the way that you want to download your export your photos is by clicking on file on the top left. You're going to find this on your top left on your windows as well. And then you just want to click on export. It will basically just open up this section. Now, from here, you have multiple different options. Now, you have multiple different presets. You can export as a small um, JPEG, large, or export original. Now, with your original settings, you're going to have your basic, you know, baseline settings, but we don't want to do that. We want to change up our settings. Now, next up, you also have copyright only or metadata. If you want to include metadata, you can do that as well. If you don't want to add any more metadata, you can do that as well. Now, after that, you have your color space. Now, for color space, sRGB is the best for social media sharing. You don't want to change that format. If you do, uh, you can choose Adobe RGB if this is going to be a compressed file that is going to be shared on email. Then on the top, you have your JPEG DNG TIF settings. I like to keep it as a JPEG, and then you can change the quality to 100%. And then you can click on your dimensions and click on full size. And that is what I like to do when I am doing something which is going to be uh, shared in terms of emails or anything of that. Now, what you don't want to do is you don't want to click on dimensions and go into customs. And this can change the size of your image. So if it's cubic, if it's going to be portrait, and you can choose that. Now, uh, if you're wondering about your color space and you can choose the sRGB, uh, which is ideal. And that means if you have a specific thing about your color and you don't, you know, you can enable this option if you want to encounter something like blue colors or green colors, if you want them to appear a bit more brighter or a bit more visually appealing. So for something like, you know, if you want it to be uh, shown on a larger monitor and you want the colors to stand out, then you want to go with display P3. And then if you want to go for, you know, a print output, if you're going to go with something like a book cover, if you're going to print this out on calendars, notebooks, things like that, you want to go for Adobe RGB. And then you also have Pro Photo RGB. 
Now, Profoto RGB is a little a bit of a variation on the Adobe RGB. If you take a look over here, you guys can see this has the reproducible colors, and this is what you want to use for a ideal larger size print of your images. Now, you guys can see you can export this like that, but if you want to just share directly, you can just click on over here, get a link, and then you can create a sharing link as well. So you can share this with your friends or, you know, whoever is working on this and you can, you know, copy and paste this and anyone can view. And you can also choose a invite only section. So this is another great way that you can share and people can export depending on where they're going to use it. So this can be a great option if you are looking to share with multiple different people and you're not sure about what kind of usage you're going to get out of this image. You can also invite people via email address. And if you take a look over here, you have multiple different options. You have customize on web as well. So you can customize the display settings over there. And then you have the settings section. Now with the settings section, you can allow downloads and export. Now, if you want your people that you are sharing this link with to be able to actually download this, you want to click on allow for this. And if you don't want to allow it, then you can just uh, remove this option. But I like to allow it because that's my purpose of, you know, using a link. And then you can choose to show metadata and location if you want. And that can be another amazing way to share all the images that you are editing or creating. You can see you get cloud storage as well. And on the top right, we have all of our settings. We have invite people, share to discover, and you can click on custom settings. Now, with these platforms, a lot of people get confused on whether or not, you know, they're supposed to be setting, you know, what is going to be perfect for every single item. I can't suggest settings that are going to work for everything, but I would recommend, uh, you know, different color spaces, as I said, for printing, Adobe RGB, for, you know, a better display, a larger display than Display P3, and Profoto RGB for further editing or a better quality, larger display and print. So after that, you also have some output sharpening, depending on what kind of paper or platform you're using. I do recommend doing this. If it's going to go on a screen, you want to go with the mount standard. If it's going to go on matte or glossy paper, you want to select that as well. As well as the fact that you can, you know, compress your images, but uh, I wouldn't recommend if you're going to upload on social media, then doing the entire compressing, decompressing the image on your mobile device or something like that can just be a little too time consuming and not worth the extra effort. So I hope you guys found this video helpful and you are now able to get started with some of the basic settings of Adobe and using Photoshop uh, and make sure to leave a like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and if you found this video helpful make sure to share this as well and leave a like. Check out our other videos on a lot of other things such as using Midjourney AI. So I do have a couple of videos on that as well because Adobe is a great tool but you can really enhance the performance or the creativity that you have with Adobe can really be enhanced with Midjourney's AI. So make sure to check that out as well. And I will catch you guys in the next video.